What's going on, Misfit Nation? Welcome to another episode of the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Matt the Misfit Tonight. We're going to go over Monday Night Raw for November the 21st, 2022. Raw's Go Home Show for Survivor Series. That's coming up this weekend, Saturday night. Uh, from Boston, Massachusetts, the TD Garden. Uh, war Games, all that good jazz and stuff like that. If you like what you see here, hit the subscribe button. Comment down below like button, follow the social medias, all of them. Twitter at Misfit Wrestle TV, Instagram at Miss Wrestling Pod. Over there on the Facebook Misfit Wrestling Podcast, right here on youtube.com slash at the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. This show is kind of weird. This show was very, very weird. Uh it started off great. Uh and then it just took a nosedive from there. Um the rest of the show was not good. This was not a very good go home show for for uh Survivor Series. Um, this was also basically a go home show to advertise Friday. Because uh, Friday, we're going to find out who the fifth member of Team Bianca Belair is. And I think I have an idea of who it is based on what I've been told and has been reported by multiple people. Um, and we're going to get to that at the end of the show. Also, we've seen a name change i guess mia yim is now mi chin but commentary all night was calling her mi chin mia yim and mia yim and the mi chin mi chin of the yosi mia yim so we'll find out what that's all about we'll have confirmation hopefully tomorrow about what's going on there yeah let's go over the show here the show opened with uh brawling brutes and kevin owens they're getting ready to Go to war with the bloodline on Saturday night. Uh, Owen says he joined the war games for one specific reason. Roman Reigns, he says uh, it's been two long years since the one that we faced one of another. He says he took him to the limit three times and intends to do take. He t- intends to take the, out the the bloodline so he can have his championships or take both of Roman's t- uh, titles, basically. He was extended an invitation to SmackDown by a few guys and reveals he didn't come alone. Uh, talking about the Brawling Brood, Sheamus, uh, Pete Dunne, uh, Rich Holland, and Drew McIntyre. Um, they come out uh, through the crowd that is like the Shield used to do. Rich Holland says it's fight night before Sheamus says there's a banger coming in the snow. Yeah, I'm not going to catch that line. He says that war games will be uh, painstaking uh, and career altering. It says the bloodline found out uh, who the fifth member of war games will be. Uh, McIntyre says that he can't remember a time when the bloodline weren't holding titles, uh, weren't holding their titles hostage. He says that uh, that will all change on Saturday, even though it's not a title match. True, uh, says that they want to rip apart the bloodline and ask fans if they're ready for war games. Um, so, you know, get, building, building that to that, that should be a great fucking main event. Judgment Day's music hits. Rhea Ripley tells McIntyre to shut up. Says everyone will be talking about the Women's War Games match on Saturday. They might, depending on who the fifth woman is. Again, I'll talk about that in a little bit when we get to that. She says, Judgment Day runs raw and Damian Priest says that they need to show some respect to a, a Judgment Day. Dominic says hello to his, tells them to tell hello to Rey Mysterio on SmackDown before Finn Balor says he's rooting for the bloodline, which is weird given that just over a year ago around this time, you, you were one to beat up Roman Reigns. Says next time they show their faces on Raw Judgment Day won't be so nice. Sheamus says they lived close to one another in Ireland. Uh, they are a million miles apart from America. Uh, Balor says that even salt looks like vinegar. Uh, Sheamus says that he's been waiting to face him in the ring for a long time, one-on-one. Sheamus then challenges him, uh, Judgment to a tag team match, and they accept. Uh, then we got the Judgment Day Brawling Brutes uh, six-man tag match. Uh, Sheamus delivers a kick to Balor. Uh, the Balor is, is is trying to stay strong because he has well he's facing AJ Styles on Saturday night. Priest tags in, fires some 
uh, rights on. Seamus, Seamus, Seamus fired back with a right hand, then sends to the top rope uh, and delivers a flying clothesline. Adrian Holland then tags in, delivers a kick to uh, Pre- uh, Damian Priest's face. Fa- uh, Priest fires back with right hand, uh, then plants Holland with a broken arrow. Uh, tags in Dominic. He fires off some right hands, then tags Balor back in. Uh, Balor delivers a an elbow, uh, followed by a drop kick. Uh, Mysterio then tags in and delivers a, a kick to uh, Holland. Fires off some. Right hands, but Holland uh, decides to fire that back with a vertical suplex. Uh, Butch and Ballard tag in, and then we get a great little uh, back and forth with with Ballard and Pete Dunne. Those two have had matches to get to each other. They, I remember their incredible match at a NXT Takeover last year for the NXT title. Uh, that was a really fun, fun, fun match. Uh, Butch delivers a double knees. Uh, then follows it up with a roundhouse kick. Butch walks in the Fujiara armbar, uh, but Brace pulls him out of the ring, chokes lemons him into the uh, ring apron. They go to commercial break. After that, Priest uh, delivers an uppercut to Butch, hits him hits a back elbow, then the tags in Balor. Balor uh, hits a cannonball, then tags Priest back in. Priest hits, delivers the drag drop, then tags. There's a lot of tags going on to this. Uh, Tags Mysterio. Mysterio beats down Butch. Tags back into Balor. Balor, uh, Butch hits into Gary. Then he tags the, <laughs> to Rich Holland. Rich Holland uh, levels Balor with a uh, triad of a uh, triage of uh, vices in the corner. Then plants him. Mysterio and Sheamus get back into the match. Uh, uh, Dominic then looks to retreat uh, to the back. Uh, Sheamus Chases him, the OC's music hits, preventing him from doing so. Sheamus gets um, Dominic back into the ring and starts hitting the Irish Chris backbreaker. And then Sheamus just beats the shit out of him with the 10 beats of the uh, Bodron. Um, then, or it wasn't even the 10 beats, it was the 20 beats of the Bodron. Um, then follows it up with the bro kick for the win, the brawling brute twin, like making sure they look strong going into war games. After the match, uh, the Judgment Day beats down Brawling Brutes. The OC lends a hand, helping hand. The Brutes, uh, as the, the OC lends a helping hand to the Brutes, as Owens hit Ballard with a stunner. And I love uh, Owens on the commentary. And he's like, "Oh, well, hold on, Drew. Don't worry about it, Drew. You're, you have street clothes on. Are you wearing street clothes? Some Kevin Owens is great. Um, so that's how that segment ended. That was probably the only highlight of this entire show. If I'm being a hundred percent completely percent, hundred percent honest with you on that. Other than that, I did not care about the rest of the show, but I'm gonna talk about it anyways. Unfortunately, it's one thing I'm about to talk about. It pisses me off to a degree. Johnny Gargano heads to the ring. Uh, uh, Miz also is heading to the ring uh, because it was, supposed, it was supposed to be the Miz and Johnny Gargano, and now fucking comes. Omos and Omos squashes Johnny Gargano, and I cannot believe I just read that out of my mouth. And they change this fucking theme song. Triple H, you have got to either just pay, just buy the rights, the library rights to, from CFOs, or or so, or just bring them back together or something, because. No, no. There's certain themes you just don't touch. Rip a heart is one of them. Another one you don't touch is no one can survive. Another one you don't touch is um. Well, it's really it. Um, like there's other songs that that Def Ruffle has done that's actually pretty good. You know, like Yoshirai's know, theme music and and you know you know things like that. But not all of their music is great. And then we got a backstage promo, uh, our sit-down interview with Seth Rollins, who I'm assuming is a babyface now, I'm not sure. This whole thing confuses me, because it's a, uh, we, cause we didn't find out at Survivor Series, it's going to be a triple threat match for the United States title, Rollins, Theory, Lashley. Uh, Rollins uh, says that, 
Um, he asked for this match with Theory and Lashley for Survivor Series. Says that you survive a while. Uh, says you survive a while, Bobby Lashley. Says uh, he he says then he has a PhD in getting. Rollins calls Theory a, a basically a dumb motherfucker for uh, for trying to attack him from behind uh, to make a name for himself. He mocks uh, Theory and tells him that to call Carter Rhodes. Uh, says that he's going to work with Ashley and Theory. Any of them could snap in an instant. He says he's not worried about taking on either of them. He will still be United States champion after Saturday. Then we got the Austin Theory. He tells uh, Seth Rollins that he doesn't understand him. Uh, he he says hitting rock bottom was the best thing to ever happen to him. Uh, he says he's a new man. Says that uh, after Saturday he will become the United States champion. Uh, and there was a few times, and I'm not the only who mentioned, notices it, notices this, there was a few times he mentioned Dolph Ziggler uh, without, with, for no reason. Just he said Dolph like three times in the entire segment. It was very weird. Then somebody, Mustafa Ali pissed somebody off because Austin Theory just beat his ass. I don't know what's up with with Mustafa Ali. I'm hoping, and I I not. I agree with Alex Pulaski on this. Uh, he said that if, if this doesn't end with Ali eventually getting the United States title, then why are we doing it? Lastly, he appears on the Tron, says he's just going to beat the shit out of Austin Theory, and that's what exactly happened. Uh, then, following that, because uh, I don't want to talk, spend more time talking about Austin Theory, uh, we get Matt Riddle and Elias. Um, Matt Riddle and Elias win here. It was a fine match. Uh, nothing too big about it happened here. Uh, Riddle doesn't win, didn't actually, as far as I know, Riddle did not hit the RKO in this match for once. Wins with a floating bro. I think they're getting away from the Randy Orton stuff uh, for a while. We don't know when Randy Orton's coming back. Um, if Randy Orton comes back before WrestleMania, it's probably going to be Matt Riddle and, and, and Randy Orton. Uh, but, yeah, nothing too big here. Uh, then after that, we found out that uh, we got a backstage promo with Baron Corbin and uh, JB L- Moron. They're playing poker. They rag on Alberni before Drew McIntyre walks in. McIntyre mocks uh, they mo- the two mock start the two start mocking uh, Scotland, which leads Drew to challenge Corbin to a match. Whoop the fucking dude! 2019 all over again. 2018, 2019 all over again. Everybody. Uh, Corbin accepts and hits him with the cheap shot. They go to the break. Uh, then we have the video package to hype up the War Games matches. The commentator run down the, the War Games card. I will go over the warm, the, the current War Games card uh, after I go through this entire show. Baron Corbin, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre wins. I don't want to talk about this anymore because this went off way too fucking long. Uh, so oh, McIntyre wins due to a distraction by Akira Tozawa, of all people, for stealing JBL's hat, whatever. Then, backstage, we're getting a no-see promo with Kathy Kelly. She asked how he's feeling with his, about his match with Finn Balor. Uh, he says that he's running, he says emotions are running high. He says that our style says that the OC is his family now, and he puts their issues are the issues with the judgment day to rest once and for all. Balor walks in, stares him down before Rhea Ripley yells, Hey, Mia! And just starts beating up Mia. Yeah, everybody else is just cracking. They go out to the 43 degrees of weather outside, and they're brawling, brawling into the parking lot. Um, next up, uh, main event segment here. Uh, Asuka, Bianca, Alexa Bliss come out to the ring. Uh, they say that uh, they're going to go to war with team, Bailey's team. Um, and they're going to find out who the fifth member is on Friday, which I thought was the stupidest thing to do. Bianca says, damage control has made a whole lot of enemies, and when they find out who their fifth person is, fans will not be disappointed. Well, a certain fan base will be disappointed if it's who I think it's going to be. Um, but we'll get to that. 
Rhea Ripley comes out with damage control and Nikki Cross. Bailey says that she doesn't believe that there's a fifth member. Uh, since they'll be taking me making them wait until Friday, but she doesn't care. Then we got the main event: Oscar Rhea Ripley winner gives uh, uh, an advantage of War Games. And this is this is fine. I mean, uh, they had a much better match on Raw a few months ago, sometime last year, after Rhea won the championship. I mean, the WrestleMania match was all right, uh, but. Um, I don't know, something's off about these two chemistry-wise. I don't know what it is. Uh, like, I was excited for their match at WrestleMania, and the, their WrestleMania was, eh, match was all right. But um, Rhea Ripley wins. Riptide for the win. Obviously, it was kind of very obvious that they were going to go with the heels, because the heels always get the the, the advantage in war games. Which is going to be the case on Friday. Um and which obviously, and now that the and now that the 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 uh, Rhea and got the advantage for her team here, they're not they're not winning. Well, maybe they will because uh, to be fair, uh, undisputed era did win more games when they got their advantage. So after the match, w- women all brawl, brawled. Rhea Ripley's just standing around, uh, walking, watching all of it happen. BM comes back into the ring. She starts beating up uh, Rhea Ripley. Uh, and heading, and those two head to the, through the crowd. Oscar then levels everyone with high cross body. Uh, referees come down to check on the women as the show goes off the air. But Raw was Raw was all right. It was I mean Raw wasn't all that good. This is probably the one of the shortest episodes of Raw I've, I've you know covered. Um, probably because it just wasn't that good of a show. If I'm being honest, like. You're building towards your first War Games show for the main roster, and it just was not very good. Kevin Patrick again, once again, adds nothing to the commentary booth. You gotta, you, you gotta either bring back Mauro Ronaldo, somehow get Tom Phillips away from Impact. Some uh, from Impact. Uh, sorry, I chuckled a little bit. Um, or, or fucking who was the other guy? Who who else? Or just have Michael Cole call both shows. I mean, come on now. But let's talk about that fifth member here. Fightful Select put out a report earlier today. Go subscribe to Fightful Select about nine hours ago of me recording this. They put out this report uh, about Becky Lynch and what's going on with her. Uh, and here's the and here's what uh, Fightful had to say. A Fightful Select has re- uh, Fightful Select has re- Fightful Select has learned uh, that as of last week. Uh, at the least, the former Raw Women's WWE Women's Champion and WrestleMania main eventer Becky Lynch was expected back soon. Becky subs- uh, sustained a shoulder separation uh, at SummerSlam in July with, in her match with Bianca Belair and has been out of action since. WWE were very happy that, to hear that they avoided surgery with Becky Lynch, which is a good thing. Uh, which is something I was also told by one of my close sources. Uh, but the wor- word but word was that she wouldn't be able to resume any in-ring training in any capacity until October at the least. In addition, Fightful was told that Becky Lynch was discussed and planned as the fifth member in the Survivor Series War Games match uh, that has been speculated for quite some time. As is all, as is often the case in wrestling, creative plans can absolutely change. Uh, we've heard from several members of the WWE. Of, we've heard from several members of the new WWE regime. They're excited to work with Becky without her being under the uh, the the stupidity booking of Vince McMahon. Well, that's not what the that the last that stupidity booking part is not listed in here, but I, I put that in there. So. There, so I think it could be Becky Lynch. It just makes a lot of sense at this point. Um, I was told uh, by one of my good friends, uh, Andrew Zarin, for a month, uh, at least he told me back in, I want to say September, he told me that, uh, it's the first time I'm actually putting this out here, he told me that uh, Becky Lynch would be possibly back before Survivor Series, or just in time for Survivor Series. I believe this was before it was announced the Virus Series was going to be uh, a War Games event. And now that this has come out, it just lines up with what I was told. And people expecting 
I'm sorry, but you you shouldn't be expecting yeah, uh, Sasha Banks at the show. I don't care that's in Boston. It doesn't make sense for her to be in there. And Triple H did say when they announced that war, uh, so I was going to be war games. He did say storyline driven matches for war. The, the war games matches are going to be storyline driven. He's not going to put together a team for the sake of putting together the t- a team. If he were to put Sasha Banks in this match, it goes against well, what he said uh, about this mat, the, these matches. You, you're probably asking, well, why is Drew McIntyre in, and Sheamus and, and Bloodline and, and the Bloodline stuff. Well, you guys don't remember Sheamus and Cesaro are no shit. Sheamus and, and Gunther had an Intercontinental title match on SmackDown a few months ago, a month, sometime last month. And guess who got involved in that match? The Usos did. So, no wonder the fucking Bloodline is going to have a problem with that. So, of course, that makes sense. Drew McIntyre, Solo Sokoa screwed him out of the Universal title at Cl- in Cardiff. He has every right to be wanting to be uh, have a piece at Solo Sokoa and the rest of the Bloodline. Kevin Owens has been a part of the same the same insane storyline with the Bloodline since the very beginning. It just makes sense. So those five individuals make a, a lot of sense to be part of this. For the women, you have right now you have you have. But the women right now for yeah Bailey Dakota Kai Io Sky Nikki Cross uh, Rhea Ripley on the other side you got Bianca Oscar B- uh, Alexa Bliss and Mia Yim. Okay, so Damage Control has been feuding with Oscar Alexa Bliss and Bianca Belair for months now. That makes total sense. Mia Yim, she you know believe it or not she's gonna she will go Mia Yim will want. I'm pretty sure Mia Yim is going to want payback for what happened in 2019 where Dakota Kai cost her her, her, her spot in war games. If, let's just be real. Dakota Kai is the one who attacked Mia Yim and, and it's the only reason why Dakota Kai was even in the well, quote-unquote in the first women's war games match. And Rhea Ripley is in there because, because she's feuding with Mia Yim so it just makes sense there. Now, the fifth member, there's only three people that make sense here. Because, again, it's all about them feuding with each other. Uh, Beth Phoenix would make a lot of sense because she's feuding with Rhea Ripley. And Mia Yim is feuding with Rhea Ripley. So it just makes a lot of sense in that part. But when it comes to the rest of the storyline, Candice LeRae was attacked off screen by damage control. Now, I don't think it is Candice LeRae because. Candace, um, my I do think Candace is legitimately hurt. Uh, the reason why they didn't do they did the injury angle off screen is because that way, whatever if it's a concussion that 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 she suffered or whatnot, like I'm not I'm not saying that's what it is, but if I'm just speculating, if it's a concussion that she suffered, you probably are not going to want to have see have her getting beat up, shown being beat up. You know what I'm saying? The one that actually makes the sen- most sense here, and it's the one who I think it's going to be, and it's probably going to be, and it's going to make a lot of Sasha Banks fans and stands are uh, very upset, and I don't give a shit that if it does, Becky Lynch. It was it all this whole fucking storyline with the dam- with damage control started with Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch, and uh, I know a lot of Alexa Bliss. Fans are gonna hate me for saying this. Uh, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not my not my friend uh, PM, um, who uh, who's a pretty cool dude at my uh, from a, a pretty cool dude. But Alexa Bliss was not supposed to be a part of this storyline at all. It was it was always going to be Becky Lynch, but because Becky got injured, Alexa Bliss was putting her in that spot. Bianca, so Becky Lynch was always supposed to be a part of this this feud. It just makes sense for her to be the fifth member, uh, and I think it's going to be the fifth member. When it happens, I'm going to laugh and cry. I'm going to laugh. The Sasha Banks stands are going to cry, and I'm going to laugh and say, "I fucking told you." And and I know people are going to say, "Well, they did it in Boston. She can, it, no matter who it is, it's going to get, if it's not 
posture. It's gonna, people can boo, gonna, they're going to boo them. No. No, they aren't. SmackDown was in Boston a few months ago. This was post walkout, and there wasn't a single Sasha Banks. Uh, maybe there was a few. Maybe there was one Sasha Banks sign, but there was no Sasha Banks chance. I don't think Sasha. I don't think you're, it's going to get a, a big uh, that much of a black backlash like you guys think it's going to. Like WWE, they ever said that that one like uh, Sasha Banks was coming back to the company. Who never advertised her for the Survivor Series show, and three never actually said she was going to be a part of the, the 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 War Games match, and four, why would you bring her back in a War Games match where she has nothing to do with it? Wasn't feuding with anybody pre walkout or post walkout. Not at least not any of the the nine people in this match already. Mia Yim was wasn't even in the company when she when she was when she before she walked out. Alexa Bliss wasn't even a part of the summer WrestleMania show card. She walked out before Alexa Bliss even came back. Oscar, Oscar had come came back in months after she, after Alexa after uh, Sasha walked out. Bianca and Oscar have not even uh, Bianca and Sasha haven't even touched since WrestleMania last year. Bailey and Sasha haven't touched touched. That's since 2020. No, 2019. No, it was 20. No, it was 2020. They haven't touched in like two years. Dakota Kai and Eos Sky were on NXT when, or Dakota Kai was was in NXT when she was still when she before she walked out or after she walked out, but then was fired. Eos Sky was in the was still in the NXT brand. Nikki Cross was probably the only Rhea Ripley and Nikki Cross was the only people in that that WrestleMania match that she was in, but they never touched again. Just you know, Sasha Banks stands are probably the worst type of people that I've ever seen in my life. And I'm talking about, and I'm talking also talking about the fucking dude in New York too. He pisses me off too with this. Oh, it should be Sasha Banks. No, it shouldn't be. What storyline sense would it be for it to be Sasha Banks? Use your fucking brain. But yeah, that's that was raw. Not good. Not that very good of a show. Uh, but I'm gonna go over this card here. This updated card for Survivor Series. We have, uh, we have right now two only two championship matches on this show. Uh. Ronda Rousey defending the SmackDown Women's title against Shotzi Blackheart. Uh, Finn Balor taking on AJ Styles. Uh, triple threat match for the United States title. Seth Rollins defending against Austin Theory and Bobby Lashley. Then we have the two War Games matches. We have the Women's War Games match. Bailey, Dakota Kai, Io Sky, Nikki Cross, and Rhea Ripley taking on Bianca Belair, Asuka, Alexa Bliss, Mia Yim. And to be uh, announced, okay, most likely Becky Lynch. Um, and the men's one, we have the Bloodline, which is going to be Roman Reigns, the Uso, Solo Sokoa, and Sami Zayn taking on uh, the brawling roots of Sheamus, uh, Ridge Holland, and Pete Dunne, who will be teaming. Who they will be teaming with Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens. Rumored matches to be added to this card, most likely is going to be Bray Wyatt and L.A. Knight. As another match is going to be added to the card, um, maybe, maybe. I don't. If that match is added to the card, it's going to be probably the shortest match on the card. But other than that, that was Monday Night Raw. Not a very good show. Um, um, this this was not a very good show. Um, I, I don't know. It just wasn't very good. Uh, Wednesday night. Um, so the plan is to do. To get back to doing the uh, Dynamite reviews because we are sitting, we hit the reset button on AEW after full gear with MJF as the new AEW champion, uh, Jamie Hader as the women's champion, and we got the acclaimed as the tag team champions. Uh, Samoa Joe is the new TNT champion. We're going to talk all about that on Wednesday night for Dynamite. Uh, setting up the road to uh, winter is coming, and then after that, we're going to get ready for the road to. Uh, to the 
Revolution show in March of 2023. Friday night, first they're going to do SmackDown, the final SmackDown before War Games, and then Saturday, big day for WWE uh, War Games Survivor Series. Um, and it's going to be a busy week. Also, I want to say, uh, I hope you guys have a safe holiday weekend. Uh, three weekend week whatever you want to call it week weekend everything i have been matt the misfit this has been the misfit wrestling podcast the social media links links will be down in the description down below do all the subscribing the liking and the commenting until wednesday night until then i will see you guys later we're out